Good day, everyone, and welcome to our GTAC Tech Talk webinar on Omnicast Active Directory integration. Uh, I apologize for the uh, slight mix-up in the times there for any uh, inconvenience they had in logging in, uh, but we'll uh, get right to it there. Uh, my name is Derek Schaefer, and I'm a technical support representative with the Genetech Technical Assistance Center, otherwise known as the GTAC. To give you a quick rundown on what we'll be covering today, first we'll look into how the integration of Active Directory works with Omnicast, including requirements and how it affects your Omnicast system. Uh, the next section will be on the configuration and maintenance of the system, which will take approximately 20 minutes. And then the next 10 minutes, we'll be looking at some tips and scenarios, and then some basic troubleshooting. And after that, we have some frequently asked questions. At any point in the presentation, you can type a question in the question box of the GoToWebinar console, and one of our Genetech Technical Assistance Center engineers will get back to you with an answer. Any questions that are not answered in the time allocated for the webinar will be recorded, and you'll receive your answer by email. Uh, we'll be posting the answers to the questions in the Omnicast section of the GTAP form as well. So the first thing we need to have a look at is Active Directory. Uh, what is it and what does it do? In a nutshell, Active Directory is a Windows service that maintains and controls a set of objects consisting of resources, users, and user groups. Its purpose is to have one central place to do all your network administration and authentication. Technically, there are a lot of things the Active Directory can manage, like domains and security, but what we're most concerned with are the users and user groups. So within uh, Active Directory, we can set up user groups and users who are assigned to those groups. Usually the groups are based on the roles or security settings of the users. For example, you could have users divided into groups called operators, technicians, and management. Once a user has been assigned to a group, you just need to maintain the properties and settings of the group instead of the uh, each individual user account. Now when we create a new group, we can assign security, permissions, and privileges for a group, and then start adding users to the group. By default, new users are added to the domain users group. So how is this going to help us in Omnicast? What we're doing is simplifying the user management of the system. We can import any groups of users that we have previously de been defined in the Active Directory into Omnicast. So the same thing we're doing in Windows, which is cutting down on how much user maintenance we have to do, we're doing in Omnicast as well. There will be a few changes to how you do things within Omnicast once the Active Directory integration has been enabled. First and for no foremost, uh, you will not be able to add, delete, or modify users and user groups in Omnicast. This is all being handled by Active Directory. Now let's say you need to change a user from one uh, integrated user group to another, or add a completely new user to a group. You'll just need to do this within the Active Directory, and Omnicast will reflect the changes as well. The user uh, will be deleted from Omnicast when, uh, when the user has been deleted from the Windows Active Directory system. Uh, and not just disabled or moved to a group that is not integrated within Omnicast. The user maintenance in the Windows Active Directory includes information like passwords and email addresses. The only settings you'll need to maintain are the ones which are local to the Omnicast system, like permissions and privileges. The only exception to this is the admin account and the administrator's user group. Omnicast still maintains full control over both of those as they are not managed by the Windows Active Directory. So before getting started with our configuration, there's a few things we need to check. Uh, Active Directory integration is a licensable option. So the first thing to do is open up your server admin and have a look at your directory options under the license section. You should see something like down here that says Active Directory integration, and it should be supported. You can also take a look in the Genetech Technical Assistance Portal, or GTAP. Under the System Management section, you take a look at your directory license. You can expand that by clicking on the arrow to the right of the title bar. And you should see a part number that looks something like uh, OMEACD44. So the 44 is dependent on your version. In this case, uh, it took a version from 4.4. 4. 
and you'll see Active Directory integration and it is supported. Now the next thing you want to take a look at is the uh, user that the directory service is logging in with. Uh, to get to the Windows Services screen, you can either run services.msc, that's Michael Sam Charlie, or start it from the Administrative Tools section in the Control Panel. Now, we need this user to have access to the Windows Active Directory, and it must be a domain account with interactive logon privileges. Basically, uh, it needs to be able to start the Windows Services on our directory server. If you have a failover directory, you'll need to make sure the directory service on that machine is set up the same way. The other thing you might want to take a look at is how your groups are set up in Active Directory and plan which ones you want to bring into your Omnicast system. Uh, make sure you have all the users you'll need in place uh, in their uh, appropriate groups. So now we're on to the setup and configuration of the Omnicast Active Directory integration. Just two quick notes before we get started. Whenever you're making changes, additions, or deletions to the Omnicast Active Directory groups, you'll need to have the directory service stopped. If you try to do anything, it will actually prompt you uh, to uh, stop the directory service. Uh, if your directory is part of a failover system, you'll need to stop the directory failover coordinator, or DFC, before stopping the directory, or it's going to try to restart that on you. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is that when you enable the Active Directory integration, all the current users and user groups that have been defined in Omnicast will be wiped out if they do not have a match within your Windows Active Directory. This is, of course, with the exception of the uh, previously mentioned admin user and the administrators group. If the users or groups existed, any information uh, will be updated with the current Active Directory information. So if we're getting this up and running for the first time, the first thing we need to do is open the server admin and click on the directory. We can click on the Active Directory tab on the right as well. And before we forget, let's stop that directory service. So for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to be using a failover system in our examples. Now you can see that the Activate button here uh, has been enabled uh, now that our sets are uh, uh, directory service is not running. You can tell that by the red uh, red globe there. Um, so now let's click on the activate button and it will bring up a window where we can do our active directory uh, add our active directory groups to Omnicast. Uh, there's a few uh, ways of doing this. First if you know the name of the active directory group enter the name in the field and click on the green plus sign. You can add multiple groups by using partial searches. So you type in the partial name right there and click on the green plus sign and then you'll get a, uh, a list of the, um, the uh, matches in the window there. Now from this screen you can hold down the control key and click on the groups you wish to add and once you have all the ones you wish to add highlighted, click on the OK button to add them to the group list. Now, let's say someone told you the name of the group to add, but then the guy down the hall started going on and on about his vacation, and when you got back to your desk, you totally forgot it. Well, you're in luck, because you can browse to the group as well. Just hit the folder icon in the group list, and you can find it in the tree. You want to highlight it and just hit the OK. Uh, using this method, you can add uh, only one group at a time. So you'll have to hit OK once you've found it. And hit the uh, folder button again to uh, browse to another one. If you've added a group that you don't want to, uh, to uh, have uh, in the system by accident, uh, you can highlight the group and then hit the red X next to the uh, folder icon to remove that group. Now, once you've added all the groups in the selected groups list that you need, uh, hit the OK button, and it will start to process the groups. Just a quick note that when importing groups, it will ask you if you want to import the users with the selected groups. Um, if you choose no, the users will be dynamically added to the system when they log on. Uh, if you uh, have an Active Directory system where there are a lot of users and not all of them will be logging into the Omnicast applications, you might want to go with this option. Now, trying to import a large number of users in the system at one time can slow down the system and take a little while to complete. 
So we're going to say yes here. And once you confirm that you do or do not want to import the users, the merge tool will run. And when that is finished, it will give you a list of conflicts. And basically this is uh, any changes that will be uh, made to the system. Uh, to confirm the import, you'll need to click on the activate button on the bottom right. Now, this is your point of no return, where the users and groups currently in the Omnicast system that do not have a match in the Windows Active Directory will be deleted. So, after hitting the activate, we should get a message saying that the synchronization was completed. We'll just hit OK there. Uh, so now we'll be back to our Active Directory tab uh, with a status of active in the integration details. And uh, our list of uh, groups are uh, in the list below here. Our next step is to configure our cleanup job, which handles the deletion of users when they have been deleted from your Windows Active Directory system. Now, please note that when putting a low value like one, uh, one minute, like in the example here, um, that's going to put a lot of stress on the system, uh, especially if you have a lot of users and groups. So considering uh, in most cases we won't be deleting users every couple of minutes, a cleanup time of 60 minutes should be fine. So we'll just change that there. Now, once again, don't forget to uh, hit the uh, apply button on there after making the change. And once we're finished here, we can take a look at the directory service logon account. Uh, as mentioned, this user must be part of the domain with rights to access the Windows Active Directory and be part of the local administrators group. The uh, directory failover coordinator or DFC service must be using this domain user account as well. So basically, you just want to go in your services and find your directory, and you can uh, right-click, go to the properties, and change your uh, logon as user here. And uh, same thing for the DFC. So once that's been changed, we want to fire up our directory service again and the DFC if you'd stopped it. So here we can see the directory is running. We have our globe back. And one last step in uh, the initial setup is to determine what kind of privileges and permissions our newly imported groups will have within the Omnicast system. We'll need to log on with the admin account to assign the privileges and permissions. Uh, as it's the only account at the moment that has any privileges set. Remember, this is our initial setup. So the admin account is permanently set up with everything allowed. Uh, by default, everyone else's privileges will be set to undefined. You can see we haven't gotten down to these ones yet here, uh, which basically operates like a denial since there's nothing to override it. So we just want to open the config tool, go into the user management section, uh, expand your groups here, and set up the privileges and permissions as you need them. Again, don't forget to hit the apply button. Now that we have that all set up, let's go over what you'll have to do if you want to add a new group after that. First, let's open the server admin in the directory server. Click on the directory tree on the left. And let's stop it. Next, we want to go to the uh, active directory tab on the right and click on the deactivate button and then click yes to confirm and that we do indeed wish to proceed okay now uh, now the list is cleared and it has been uh, deactivated uh, we're gonna click on the activate button uh, which will bring up our familiar select groups window your previously selected groups will be in the list already now we need to go through the same steps we had previously done to uh, to add groups uh, either by putting in a full or partial name and clicking on the uh, green plus sign or clicking on the folder and choosing the group from a list of current groups. So once we hit OK in the screen, uh, it's uh, going to go, it'll do the comparison as it did before and give us our Active Directory Merge Tool window. And it's going to list any conflicts as well. So we can see we already had uh, a few of these in the system. It's updating with the current Active Directory uh, information. So we'll just uh, hit activate to proceed with synchronization and hit OK once we get this message that it's been completed successfully. Now we want to double check that the new groups were added in the groups list. You can see that we added our synergist team down here. And uh, if we're all good there, let's uh, go ahead and start up our uh, directory service again. Now, before we forget, we'll want to head over to the config tool 
and set up the privileges and permissions for the, uh, the new groups that we imported. Okay, so um, now we're on to our tips and scenarios. Uh, these are a few uh, little tips and scenarios, uh, uh, just so you know what to expect from your Omnicast Active Directory integration. So if your Windows Active Directory ever goes down, the users who are already current connected to Omnicast will remain connected as long as the Omnicast Directory service is running. So new users will not be able to log in, except for the admin user, since it's local to the uh, Omnicast uh, server, and it's not part of the Active Directory system. When a new user is added to a group in the Windows Active Directory, they will not show up in, uh, in the Omnicast config tool until they log in for the first time. If you need them to appear in Omnicast before they log in for the first time, you can force a resynchronization just by uh, clicking on deactivate and reactivating as we did before. So just be careful when you do this since it's going to kick all of your uh, current uh, Omnicast users off the system. Now, the cleanup job will only remove a user from Omnicast when the user has been completely removed from the Windows Active Directory. So if you move a user to a different group that is not in your Omnicast Active Directory groups, and the user still exists in Active Directory, Omnicast will not automatically clean up the user. This applies for uh, disabling a user account as well. But uh, don't worry, Omnicast won't allow them to log in. Uh, if you want to get rid of that user completely in Omnicast, you can delete the user by uh, manually by logging in with the admin account. So let's say we have our situation here uh, where the Omnicast directory service stops uh, while the uh, Windows Active Directory is downed or unreachable. So you can see our authentication path is, uh, is not valid there. We can't, uh, can't get any uh, credentials there. Um, basically, um, it's not going to be able to start up again until the Active Directory is back up and running. The problem here is the domain user that the directory service logs in with uh, will not be able to authenticate in order to start the service. All hope is not lost, however. You can change the user directory, the, uh, the user the directory service logs in as to a local user, like the Omnicast service user, and get the directory service running again. So you can see in this case, we're back to our directory is back to uh, the uh, non-AD um, Omnicast service user here. Um, the downside is that the only user that the active directory, uh, or the only user that is active is the admin uh, account, and that's going to be the only one that the client applications can log in with, since everybody else is handled with uh, Active Directory. Um, at least all your services will be running, though. Now, in a similar situation, if you do not have your failover directory service configured to log in as a domain user, none of the domain users will be able to log in to the client applications while in a failover scenario. Now, when logging into a client application, if you do not select the Use Windows Credentials option down here, uh, it, um, oh, sorry, if you do select it, it verifies the authentication information with the Windows Active Directory. Uh, if you have it checked, it will check uh, a token that is stored on your local PC when the user signed into Windows. Now, before doing a synchronization, we recommend doing a backup of the directory database. Uh, you can download the Omnicast backup tool from the GTAP in the Tools, Utilities, and under the Genetech Tools section. So there's our Omnicast backup tool right there. Um, there's a guide that comes with it to instruct you how to run it using the command line options. One last tip is to make you, um, to make you sign in as the admin account um, if you want to make changes to your system. Uh, basically, that's that's the one that has all your privileges, all your rights. So that's the uh, the best one to use. Um, now, uh, to give a group access so they can make changes as well, you can make it part of the administrator's group. So to do this, we go into the config tool, and we go into the user management section, and click on the. Uh, we need to go into the permissions here, and click on the administrator's group, and on the right side. Uh, or click on, sorry, the group that you want to make as part of the administrators. And then uh, on the right side in the member of, click on the add button down here, the green plus sign. And it's going to uh, ask you which, uh, which group you want to um, you want to add it to. We click on the add. And now we have it's a member of 
the administrators. Okay, so now we're on to our uh, troubleshooting tips. Um, so just in case everything doesn't go as planned and you run into an issue with your Active Directory integration, uh, we've got a couple of the most common problems and the troubleshooting steps you can take to try, try to uh, clear up the issue. Uh, our first common troubleshooting scenario is if the Omnicast client applications cannot connect. So first check if you can log in, to the, uh, log in using the Omnicast admin user, since this one is local to Omnicast and not controlled by the Active Directory system. Next, take a look at the Omnicast directory service uh, that, um, that the directory is logging in with. Sorry, um, This user must be part of the domain, so it will have access to the Windows Active Directory. If the directory service cannot connect to the Windows Active Directory, you will get an error that says the Active Directory credentials are invalid. The second common troubleshooting scenario is uh, where the Omnicast directory service will not start. Uh, once again, let's take a look at the domain user that the Omnicast directory service logs in as. And uh, this user, again, must be part of the local administrators group. If it is not and the user does not have rights to start Windows, uh, start the Windows services, sorry, uh, you will get an error something like this, uh, where the service did not respond to the uh, control request in a timely fashion. Uh, in case you've tried all that and you're still not able to get the issue resolved, please give your friendly neighborhood GTAC a call and we'll see if we can figure out the issue for you. All right, um, now I'd like to uh, move on to some frequently asked questions. Uh, we've covered some of this information along the way, but it's well worth repeating. So the first question is, what are the privileges required for the domain user? The domain user that the directory service uses to log on should only need read access to the Active Directory. Uh, on the directory server, the domain user should be configured as a local administrator. And the second question is, what happens when the Windows Active Directory goes down? The users already connected to the system will stay connected to Omnicast as long as the directory service is running. New users will not, be will not be able to log on, however, with the exception of the admin account. Question number three is, uh, why don't I see my new user in Omnicast after I've added them to Active Directory? The new user will appear in Omnicast after they log in for the first time. If you need to see the user before then, you'll need to deactivate and reactivate the Active Directory integration in the server admin to force a resynchronization. On to question four, why aren't uh, users removed from Omnicast after the automatic cleanup? Uh, Omnicast will not delete a user if it has been moved to another user group that is not part of the Omnicast Active Directory integration, uh, or if the user still exists and has just been disabled. The user will only be deleted from Omnicast if the user is deleted uh, from the Windows Active Directory uh, or manually removed from uh, Omnicast as an administrator. I just want to stress that, uh, again, even though the uh, user still appears, they will not be able to log on. Question 5 asks if the directory can be restarted while the Active Directory is down. The directory service must be able to log into Active Directory in order to start. So if the Active Directory is down, it will not be able to authenticate its domain account credentials and it will remain stopped. So the last question is, uh, why the directory failover system does not work when the primary directory service goes down? Uh, the domain user is configured uh, for the, uh, the, sorry, the domain user configured for the primary directory service must be used for the failover directory service as well. Otherwise, when the directory service is activated by the directory failover coordinator, or DFC, it will not be able to log on and won't be able to start. So this concludes our GTAC Tech Talk webinar for today. I'd like to remind you that we are hosting the GTAC Tech Talk webinars on the Genetech Technical Assistance Portal under the Tools section in Utilities. Uh, also, if you have any feedback on this webinar or on the GTAC Tech Talk series in general, please feel free to uh, head on over to the forums and leave us a note. Uh, any feedback and ideas for future webinars are always appreciated. If you have any questions, they can be left there as well, and we'll get back to you shortly with a reply. 
Our next GTAC Tech Talk webinar will be held on April 8th and we'll be covering Synergist area configuration. Uh, so what we'll do, we're going to be leaving the session open for another couple of minutes uh, in case you uh, still have any, uh, any questions. Uh, any questions we have not answered during the webinar, uh, again, we'll be answering those via email. On behalf of Genetech and the Genetech Technical Assistance Center, I'd like to thank you for your time and participation in today's webinar, and we hope you have a good day.